Hello, we've got Mr. Dawson here. Good afternoon, Mr. Wagner. We're here to go ahead and review our upcoming test on Westwood expansion. And we're already working on a project that's going to help students prepare for the uh, for the exam because they're already going to be listing reasons why and yeah. talking about uh, the characteristics of the Great Plains. But we wanted to, to quickly just go over some of the main points of the study guide that you can be filling in. What's, what's this invention here, Mr. Dawson? All right, guys, I don't know if you can see this really well, but if you look at this, this is barbed wire, folks. Barbed wire. Primary use for this invention below was to keep cattle contained, either keep them out of your crops or into your pasture land, whatever the case was. And when we say, where was this invention found? Yeah, it might be down the street at a nearby cattle farm, but we want to know, we want you guys to know it was on the West um, Great Plains Great during Plains. Westward expansion. Yeah. yeah. And then this invention here, the windmill, make sure that you know that the main reason for the windmill was to pump water from these deep wells and then bring it up and store it in a tank. So that was a, that was a, a huge way to compensate for that lack of rainfall. Right. Then we got inventions, adaptations. We put a couple silly ones down there just so you'll know that they don't belong, like airplanes, obviously, steamships, that doesn't belong there cotton again that doesn't belong on the great plains yeah. now those are inventions but they don't belong with westward expansion okay so airplanes were not a thing cotton gin was long ago um, more used in the south and then we wanted to do what we wanted to underline the inventions so steel plow uh, barbed wire windmills railroads and then the adaptations and we've been over this quite a bit sod homes um, dry farming, all adaptations. And then you can see, going to number four, you can see an example of a sod house. And why, why was a sod house the material of choice? Uh, remember the uh, Great Plains were known as the treeless wasteland in the east. So there weren't a lot of trees, you couldn't just go out and make a log cabin. So instead they would make their homes from sod. with a readily available material. And then those five features of the Great Plains, we all know it's flat land. We know that there's few trees. Um, it doesn't rain much, but when it does rain, it can rain with such force it causes that erosion. Right. Yeah. And then one we, we miss sometimes, those dust storms. Don't forget that, those, those wind dust storms. Yeah. Number six, four main reasons for westward expansion. One would be adventure. People just like to go adventuring. The other one would be free land or very low cost land. Third one would be for opportunity for freedmen especially, so freedmen from the south would move out to the west in search of more free freedom. And then the fourth one, I'm forgetting. The, the adventure, uh, adventure yep. technology. Yeah, I missed in, inventions and adaptations. Yep. So those, those technological advances turned a place that was very dry and inhospitable into a place where you could live, you could farm, and you could do okay. Wealth and land. Yep. Well, well, yeah. Forgot well, sorry. Yeah. And then where did the transcontinental meet? Where the Golden Spike, that's Promontory Point, Utah. And then the two groups of immigrants that worked on the railroad, Chinese and Irish. And yep. we went over this quite a bit in the previous video. And then we, we moved on to Native Americans. Westward expansion had that negative effect on Native Americans. Yep. We had a little matching here for you. Um, Sitting Bull is the won the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Chief Joseph, famous for this quote, I will fight no more forever. Geronimo fought the U.S. and the Mexicans in the southwest region down in uh, Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and into Old Mexico a little bit. So those are your famous three chiefs that we need to know about. What tribes? Sioux, Nez Perce, Geronimo was Apache. And then the process where Native Americans were forced to adapt to the American culture, that's that assimilation term. So you can see the traditional dress being changed to um, this conventional clothing here. So you got um, artifacts that are going to represent worshiping wind and forces of nature. And now this person's probably going to be worshiping Christianity. So just forced to change culture. Custer's men were defeated at the Battle of the Little Bighorn. 
or greasy grass was the Native American term for it. Number 13, we just talked about today. So the last conflict between soldiers and Native Americans in 1890, that's the Wounded Knee Massacre. Massacre. Okay. And it was considered a massacre because it was so one-sided with the U.S. Army inflicting so many casualties, deaths upon the Native Americans that were there. And that was the Sioux Tribe. And we also wanted to, to make sure that we remember our regions because we're going to have a couple region questions. And the Battle of, of the uh, Little Bighorn took place in Montana, and that's in the Rocky Mountain region. And then Wounded Knee Massacre of South Dakota, that's right in the Midwest region. Two main reasons why Native American population declined during westward expansion. Two big ones. The first one and most the one that probably hurt them the worst was disease. So stuff like smallpox, typhus, cholera, those types of things. And the second one being warfare. Many were killed during warfare, but the big one, the big killer was disease. Yeah. Make it right on this a little bit. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we also put a bar graph in and we just included that because you're going to see that on the exam. We didn't want anybody to, to be surprised by it. But in 1850, this would have been representing this bar right here would have been representing the population right around 500,000. And then the bars would each time over the next 10 years would go down a little bit, go down a little bit. And finally, right around 1890, it's just a little over 300,000. So you can see how the population has declined. And we wanted to make sure, because you're gonna see a bar graph um, on your exam. So remember, the population is gonna decline. Yeah, and parents out there, if you're watching this, know that this has all been, we've spent days doing this. So this is nothing new for any of your students or should it be new. We wanted to make this as a review for the students and also for you as parents to be able to study with your children if you so choose to do so. And the, and the test is, is Friday, and we're even going to review a little bit more Friday. We're going to play a Kahoot game. Yeah, we're going to play a Friday. game, a fun game the kids enjoy on Friday. Then we'll take this test yeah. thereafter. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.